how many American cities all of a sudden seem to resemble slums. Some of you may have trouble visualizing what that means, and this is for you. After last night's program, we were sent this picture by a viewer who lives and works in the city of San Francisco. It shows the sidewalk outside his office littered with, by our count, more than 30 syringes and other drug paraphernalia. This is not in some abandoned lot or underneath the freeway overpass. It's right outside the offices of Spotify, a top tech company in downtown San Francisco. It's right across the street from WeWork. It's one block away from Zenrez. These are all tech companies. And three blocks from tech giants, Twitter and Uber. These are some of the richest companies in the richest industry in the richest city in the United States and their employees work in a circus of trash and drugs. And the question is, do elites even care? And the answer, of course, is no, they don't. U.S. cities aren't just plagued by homeless drug addicts, but also by deadly Central American gangs. It's not propaganda, it is real. We've got new numbers out today about the extent of MS-13. That's the primarily Salvadoran gang that has become the deadliest organized crime ring in the country. Jessica Vaughn is Director of Policy at the Center for Immigration Studies, and she joins us with those numbers. Jessica, thanks for coming on. Glad to be with you. So um, MS-13, despite it sounds like efforts from the federal government, is metastasizing. Is that what the numbers show? Well, it is. Um, it, some people have been very dismissive of all the attention to this gang, but it has rebuilt itself. Um, it's, it's not a homegrown gang. It was formed by people who came from Central America mm -hmm. uh, decades ago illegally. Uh, so that was a failure in border security. Um, but ICE and other law enforcement agencies were able to stifle it for a while there. But in recent years, it's really rebounded because of this it took advantage of this surge of unaccompanied minors that's been going right. on for several years and, and also the lack of immigration enforcement. So they have come back with a vengeance and uh, this is not just petty gang violence, nuisance crimes. We're talking murders, hundreds of murders that MS-13 members have been arrested for. And uh, it's a scourge in a number of communities. That so give us a sense of the scale. So we think of MS-13 as primarily in Los Angeles County, in suburban Virginia, outside Washington, maybe Chicago. It's spread, though. T t tell us what that looks like. Mm -hmm. At a certain point in time, the gang decided to almost open up franchises around the country, uh, places like Long Island, Boston, Charlotte, North Carolina, as you said, the suburbs of Washington, D.C., um, because this is a gang that's controlled from El Salvador, and the cliques in the United States do send money back to El Salvador to help to support the whole gang. Uh, and so at a certain point in time, the leaders put pressure on those members here in the United States to kick it up a notch and start doing more and uh, bring in some more people from Central America, recruit more from these kids who've recently arrived. Uh, they do extortion, home invasion, right. sex trafficking, prostitution, and, and murder to prove themselves to each other and to intimidate others in the community. And, and we found that they were active in 22 states just in the last few years and concentrated, as I said, in those areas that experienced a lot of the illegal arrivals from Central America. Right. And it's, it's urban, it's r rural as well, in some places that have never had these kind, this kind of a gang presence before, and it's right. difficult for, for them. And we should point out that the victims Even in sanctuaries. are almost well. The victims are almost all immigrants. Something that immigrants' rights advocates, so-called, uh, ignore. Um, ironically, Jessica, thank you for coming on and telling us that. I appreciate it. Thank you.